everyone, Dave Greco here and welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone had a good week this week. Sorry it's been a few. It's been crazy busy, but hopefully that's going to change very, very soon. Something we'll talk about while we're drawing today. Uh, this video will be sponsored again by Wacom. They've been amazing. There's a couple things I'd like to talk about as we continue with this drawing with Dave, which I think is going to be helpful for everybody. Some really good topics about freelance and, you know, really not working for free, no matter what part of your career that you're in, whether you're a student or a professional artist. There's a lot of things to think about when it goes into that. I think it's something we could discuss today. So it's a nice rainy morning here in Austin super relaxing it's like my favorite type of morning so i'm excited to get it in to about 45 minutes to an hour of uh, some sketching i'm gonna start up a new painting and let's just hang out and talk and paint let's hop in all right good morning everybody great to be back and do another one of these episodes with everybody and so right what we have off the bat is a completely blank canvas the, the scariest part for any artist to start drawing on this, uh, this little blank cube or square can be so intimidating and scary to so many, including myself. And so what I want to draw today is actually less of an illustration and more of a character design, um, more kind of in a conceptual pose. Uh, there's a bunch of characters that I've been brainstorming with. And on the Twitch channel, we've been doing a lot of kind of world building and kind of creating this new IP. And this is kind of going to be like another character that exists in this world. So I want to get kind of like the character started and then we can just go from there while we kind of hang out and talk. And so even for most of these sketches, I will use my DG main brush, which I use for about 95% of everything that I paint. I, I do use this brush like crazy. There is a brand new link down below uh, for my brush pack. It is uh, on Gumroad now. And that support really, really means a lot. It's really helping my transition to freelance that will be happening actually in the next few weeks finally it's been a long time coming but that means we'll be get able to get a lot more youtube content out as well it's been uh, it has been a struggle to to manage both so i have some ideas of the outfit and everything but i just want to get some shapes down of the character and it's more going to be kind of like a standing pose I think if while we're trying to figure a character out, it's kind of nice to do something simple. So we're figuring out her armor design, everything. And really, when these beginning sketches, I like to just keep my, my hands moving, keep the lines pretty loose. I'm not really sure with a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing. So I'm really just trying to find like certain points where like where the shoulders are and the arms. Photoshop's lagging a little bit on me. And, you know, her neck. All right, so we're starting to get the head figured out up here, kind of where I might want to place it. I'm really not going to spend too much time on the details yet. I will be doing kind of like a nice line drawing to figure a lot of it out. I do want this kind of like semi heroic pose here. I've been doing some things lately where I've been kind of pushing the proportions of some of the anatomy without being totally insane. So we'll, we'll try some of that today. This character does have, I think I want to have like a really pretty massive sword. It's, it's almost like a, like a space Viking really like set in near future but has these kind of like viking elements almost kind of like stranded here on the planet i think it's something we're kind of thinking of and so i'll usually adjust the canvas size as well since i'm usually not sure how we're going to start the piece and we can just keep bringing it over we'll just get the background to match if i can figure out how to use photoshop there we go and so this is actually exactly how a lot of concepts that I do for work probably start. This kind of looseness, you know, we're just kind of bouncing around. We'll figure out where her nose is and get some loose block ins for where their eyes might be. And 
And I think she's gonna have some type of helmet on. I'm not super sure what it is. She needs to have some type of horned helmet button. Some of these designs have been a, a brainstorm with, with some other people for a lot of these ideas. Can't go into too many details yet, but I'm excited to explore these initial designs with everybody. And so one of the big topics we want to talk about today while, um, while working on this is the idea of never working for free. And this is a big one. This is, and sometimes it might feel obvious, but it's actually very difficult in practice. And I, I fall prey to it sometimes as well, or have in the past, is that the idea of, you know, when you're a student or really anyone, you get very excited when anyone approaches you about doing some work or commission work and that kind of chance that you get and you're like you know i could it gives me a focus to work on something it's going to get my work out there i just want people to know never to really fall prey to the idea of you know well we're going to pay you in promotion a lot of eyeballs are going to be seen on your work you know maybe once this sells down the road we'll be able to throw some money at you and it really is just people trying to take advantage any company or outlet that is actually going to give you real promotion are professional enough to know to pay you for it. It's just a, it's a crazy, crazy idea. You know, cause you know, there's different ways to rationalize it. Like, well, if I do this one for free, maybe down the, uh, down the road, this will open up a couple other people will see this and maybe I'll get work from it. And really honestly, it's like you could do that and still get paid for it. It's, it's really something that a lot of us have to not fall into, and it's tough. It's super tough. But I think it's always a good thing to talk about. I've talked to a lot of other artists kind of one-on-one -on -one about that. Because even to my surprise, it's a lot of people that still fall to it. And I get that a lot, too. I think even some people try to do it in sneaky ways. I've had people send me messages that like, oh, I don't really want to pay for commission piece, but do you have time you know, for free to kind of help me brainstorm and figure out a piece, you know, and people shouldn't be doing that either. You know, your time is valuable no matter where you are in your career. It has major, major value. And just because you might be younger or a student, your time is just as valuable. Don't feel like it's not. You know what I'm saying? Trust me. So I think it shows a, a, a level of professionalism for you as well. Like, I think I've, in the past, I've, I've learned from it since then. And sometimes I'll, I'll have like underquoted a project to a studio or something. And I think it actually makes me look worse. You know, like, oh, well, he's not really throwing down professional prices here, or he might, he maybe doesn't take it as seriously. You know, these are all things that you learn along the way, but I think they're, they're good discussions to have. So I just want, you know, everyone can always post up about it down below their experiences with that type of stuff. I, I just think a lot of us, if we just stand together through our careers, knowing that it's unacceptable, you know, hopefully things will change or we just, you know, I think people are always going to ask for that because some people just, don't, they just don't know. They think they can take advantage of artists, but we've got more power than they do. They need us feels like way more. There's a lot of companies and clients that need work. They can deal with your price or they, they can go look elsewhere. All right. I'm really not sure kind of what we're gonna do with her top part. It's really good to flip the canvas when you're doing poses like this. Sometimes it looks like they might fall over, <laughs> which can happen sometimes. Like she's a little more stiff than I'd like right now and her legs look a little shifted and maybe this arm isn't as nice as I'd like. It's a little copy and paste these around. Uh, so one thing I'm actually gonna try to do, I think uh, like next week, 
Uh, I've had a lot of questions about it. It actually is going to be a video, a more in-depth look at my brush pack and specifically the DG main brush. How I use it. Yeah, just really going in depth on how it's completely uh, used or how I use it. Cause I use it for my line drawing, for my block ins, even into the final rendering. And so I wanna take an in-depth look into that. So look out for that video next week. I would love to kind of jump in. And I think it's one thing to throw a brush at someone. It's really can help take it to another level if you can really show people how to use it. So like most of my paintings, this stage of any painting is a giant mess. It's like the part where you start to doubt yourself as an artist. You're like, I, I don't think I, I remember how to draw people anymore. I don't know how to do this. So I always just mentally have to keep myself going. It's like, all right, I know I, know I, I, know I can get past this stage. <laughs> you know, like how big do I really want the eyes? What do I actually want her haircut to be? You know, I might almost do a version of her. She's, I think our initial talks of her, she does have this kind of like space Viking helmet on, but I may do a, a version of her without the helmet and then a version later with the helmet. I think it'd be good to have the design of both. You know, then I can kind of brush in some lips and chin. I have this habit lately of making these really <laughs> Really large chins I'm trying to avoid. But we'll, we'll clean this up on a line drawing. You know, kind of where everything goes. It's okay to be messy at first. Even when you have a lot of people <laughs> watching you do it. You know, that's the great part about digital. You know, you can, we can push and shove and tweak this around to how we want it. Like the neck's not in the right spot, or you know, you want the nose and mouth shoved up a little bit. We can kind of constantly figure that out. And that's always pretty nice. Let's bring all this down. There we go. Yeah, still trying to, um, for the most part, just stay kind of loose, keep your hand moving. Like, I'm not really sure the shape of this large blade. You know, it's gonna be large enough where we'll probably have it rest on the ground here. Well, these are always things that I, I know I'm gonna figure out a little bit later as we go. You know, we can thicken up some of these parts. Like, I'm not sure about what her boot shapes are going to be or all, any of this. I actually like drawing like a little bit of stuff on the bottom, maybe some rocks and... All right. Yeah, I'd love to hear what everyone else has been working uh, working on this summer. I know it's we're still part of the crazy year that is 2020. So I do hope everybody is staying safe, getting through it. You know, we will get through this banana of a year or, you know, whenever we get through any of this. So the best thing that I've been trying to do is keep my head down, stay busy, try to make this a productive year as possible. And I feel like I have been for the most part. I always, always feel guilty when uh, I'm not getting enough YouTube content out, but I, I'm trying, I'm always thinking about you guys over here. It's been tough to kind of managing the studio gig, which we wrapped up working on the cinematic for Crowfall, that is all done. And then we have been doing work for a lot of studios, including Magic the Gathering and Hearthstone. 
some major, major clients have been popping up that I was trying to land for a long time, kind of all landed at the same time, which has been awesome, but it has totally, totally devoured me. And I cannot wait to share it with everybody once it all releases. We also have some videos with commentary coming up on Mr. Suicide Sheep. It just launched a brand new music and art channel. And so we have a couple of videos going to be coming out that within the next month or so. Longer videos, longer paintings, full commentary that I've already completed. So that kind of took some of the extra time as well. So I kind of like this messy stage and we'll, once we get like a decent little mess plop down, I'll push the whole thing back and then we'll come in with a line drawing, a little tighter line drawing right on top of it. Okay. So I'm kind of clicking around here. We have, I have some rough sketches that we put up of this, uh, character and I want to kind of make sure we're getting kind of the same same type of vibe here okay you know we can actually jump into it pretty soon so basically this is kind of a you know loose sketch let's knock the whole thing down and fade her down a bit and this is actually usually one of my favorite parts is creating this nice line drawing after and then we can actually kind of figure out her mouth and, and all that stuff. We can kind of go around, see what lines we did have made. Really kind of just figuring out where all this goes. Like where's her head actually jammed into this. One thing I probably should have figured out before line though is figuring out kind of what we want to do with her hair. Kind of hate figuring that out after, but we're in it. We're in it now. We're sticking with it. Let's at least plop down some eyes here. And then she actually has like this little, little heart tattoo here. And then a little little nose here. I want like this almost like a look of innocence to her, like like she almost traveled through time, and she's she's super badass, but she kind of doesn't know where she is, and she f is a little lost. And we'll use some of these kind of finer lines, figure out. I don't know if she's got like a part up here where she's gonna have her bangs. I figured. This kind of comes up pretty high back here and then kind of swoops down at like an angle. We won't go crazy along with her hair as much as I want to. We won't. You know, I try to keep my hand moving pretty quick, swoop it around. You know, I like any of this stuff. None of this is set in stone. We can, we can change this a hundred times if we want. You know, like her ears shouldn't go up that high. <laughs> you know, we kind of can go back and analyze like, all right, where is her shoulders? I guess her shoulders might be right here. She should probably have, we'll give her where her chest might be. I'm kind of just still figuring out a lot of this and we can go in later and then even do another round of line drawing to clean it up, which I never mind. Like I said, th this stage is a lot of fun for me. I can figure out a lot. You know, I don't want her, her head too small either. You know, I want to decide if I, I want to exaggerate it. It's a lot of like weird little decisions you kind of make as you, you work on these. She kind of has like this double layer all these kind of multi layers of clothing on as well. And we gotta 
give her some uh, some Dave brows. I've been told I have a certain way of doing eyebrows now, and I'm just embracing it. And so I'm always looking at a lot of the individual shape design. I want the silhouette to look nice. And so that's what I, I think about a lot with the hair and everything up here. Yeah, maybe it's like her lips are like a little bit smaller in. <laughs> I want her to look like a little concerned. And, you know, we can kind of mess with it and see where we want it. You know, her neck's cut might be a little thick, a little long right now, but we can... I like to not get, like, bogged down on it if I can avoid it for now. And I can tweak that stuff as we go. Like, I might take her head, make it a little bit larger. Like it's kind of this constant decision-making that you have to do, right? When you're doing any piece of art. And I think that's how you really progress as an artist. It's the, it's the reason why you can look at old work and be like, oh my God, I can't believe that arm looks like that. But like you were totally fine with it back then. It's because you grew as an artist and you got better at that decision-making on what looks right, what doesn't. I'm sure uh, I'll look at this later and be like, oh my God, Dave, that jaw, my Lord. But we just have to, we have to keep going and keep painting. It's going to happen. There's a couple of things here I want to, oops. Fix around here. She's almost got like these like mechanical parts on her arm too. We really, I, and then one thing I kind of do as I create characters is the story kind of develops for me as I paint them. You know, I paint in a very kind of organic way where I figure out a lot as I go. You know, maybe she's got these kind of parts that come down and then little elements that pop out as I paint. Then I'm like, oh, that's pretty interesting. That might change how her character goes. We just finished a couple other pieces of some characters and I really felt like they were discovered as I painted. You know, I have some like really loose ideas to start with, but after that, you're so open to just figure a lot out on your own as you go, which I think is a blast. I would love to keep the progress of this character, maybe exclusively for, uh, for YouTube and just work on it. This to final with a couple more drama tapes too, because we're not obviously not gonna be able to get this whole thing done in this session. But we'll definitely get the our initial line drawing done. And we'll have this idea of where this eyebrow might be. And it looks like she, maybe we have these like binocle parts with uh, these kind of like bandage wrappings. It's almost like she's part of this kind of space Viking society, but they kind of, you know, go through time to protect certain certain parts of the time. I don't know, maybe I've been watching too much Umbrella Academy lately. <laughs> too much of this idea of protecting the timeline. But it's great to use kind of inspiration from so much of other, you know, games or movies or shows that you're watching at the time. It's great to bring some ideas if it pushes some of your ideas forward. You know, it's either going to work on something like this or, you know, I would love to dive into some more Final Fantasy XIV fan art as well. I've been really enjoying playing XIV again. The 5.3 patch uh, was phenomenal for anyone here that's big into XIV. So it's hard to not get inspired by this stuff, right? All right, one thing I want to do, though, is probably get rid of these horns in the back. They're a little distracting to me. There we go, there we go. 
All right, let's keep going down across the body, figure out some of these parts out. You know, I don't have to go into too many details of, you know, our kind of clenched hands here. I just tuck in these hands and knuckles and you're good to go for now. And I can kind of add in more specific little details later as you go. And so we'll figure out kind of where her hand is here and where it's the hilt would actually be on this thing since we kind of didn't figure it out. So maybe she's holding it here and the thumb coming around. And then we might have to bring the blade up a little bit. This might not be the most balanced blade, but it's a space blade. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't need real reasons here. You know, maybe it's got a couple a couple little things in it. Sometimes I'm just trying to figure out different ways to break the silhouette, right? You can spend more time later and make it a sword that actually makes sense for anyone that might hold a sword, but you know, what do I look like? Is that a swordsmith? She's got a couple belts that come down. Gotta throw some belts on. It's necessary in any concept. If you're not wearing a multitude of belts, then all your clothes are gonna fall off. So we do have a couple other projects coming up. Uh, they may be on my channel or another channel, but I will let everybody know as we get closer to it. But a lot of a lot of exciting stuff happening soon. I'm just glad to be able to get a little bit of time this morning and try to get some work in. All right. Yeah, this is definitely one of those drawings where we could do a few kind of sketches on top of it all. Uh, let me just darken up the top here. I And one thing people notice too, I do work pretty zoomed out. You know, I think there's a time and place to really dive in on the small details, but I like looking at the piece as a whole as we work. I think it makes a uh, big difference for me. I can kind of analyze everything at once, right? Looks like she's got like a little Wu Tang symbol on her cheek. <laughs> Not what we're going for. Her. All right, I, I like the, what's kind of happening so far. I'm kind of having this like heroic innocence or <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing. It's early, it's early in the morning. Well, it's like 11, it's not that early. We're actually going to publish this. When this goes up, uh, I'm gonna publish this on the same day that we're painting it, so. This is a Saturday morning, the 22nd. All right. And even like the, the um, feet and legs here, I kind of will figure out a lot of boot design stuff kind of down the road. Like she's got kind of like some thin ankles and all this stuff here, which we're probably gonna fix, but. You know, she needs some type of space rocks here, space boulders with some space grass. You know, and actually some of these shapes, it's almost like I don't even take my pen off the canvas. Oh, also, so we were talking about before about the, uh, with Wacom, they have actually been an amazing, amazing company to work with so far. I do have a list down below of some awesome links 
of some of their products for you guys to check out. They definitely have been better about making like more affordable products for people, which I think is great. I've been using like an Intuos or a Cintiq pretty much my entire career. And even like the Intuos tablets, I used, I used an Intuos tablet for 13 years before I ever upgraded to a Cintiq. And it still worked great. I ended up giving it to a uh, friend of mine that wanted to get into art and practicing art, and he still uses it. So really, really amazing. Always cannot recommend them enough. And also below, like I said before, if you are looking to get this brush that I'm doing all this line work wow. with right now, and I'll be doing some of the painting, um, I'll have a link down below to my Gumroad as well. And so we don't need, you know, too many details of stuff back here. Who knows what this is? Sometimes I draw lines just to kind of give my cell some type of movement for the piece. Kind of creating these little shapes. Okay, so you know one thing we probably would change in the future is I think we could do more and these are kind of like the analyzations that I, I do is that you know maybe we can do more with kind of some silhouette of this kind of her waist area down into the legs it's kind of all this very form-fitting stuff and doesn't give it like a ton of personality I think we could do more and that's something we can kind of figure out as we go as well I think breaking up the silhouette is a really, really good idea. You don't want to go too crazy all the time. I don't think you need to, but you know, but even if it was just like these thicker kind of smaller boots at the bottom, they kind of break it up from the ankle here up. That could be pretty solid. And one thing I'll do even before I kind of finish this sketch is let's just get some quick value down. So usually I do this with a multiply layer. I'm going to reset these settings. I'm still going to use the DG main brush as well. Might as well. Actually, we could use just a pure solid. It's really just kind of like just this flat, non textury block in. And you could keep it black and white. You could put, keep a little bit of color in there. It doesn't really matter too much. I don't mind having like this little light blue in. And let's just kind of block in the whole character. That way she kind of stands out already from the background. You know, you could kind of lasso this and then fill it. Sometimes I still like kind of doing it with a brush. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? There we go. And then we'll just fill in the sword. It's almost like using um, like some Prisma markers or something, which I remember always kind of doing back in school. And then I might actually just take the, uh, the just the airbrush, even the airbrush in the pack is just really just a straight airbrush, and just kind of like dab over some sections, you know, like where we might kind of throw some light on. Like it's kind of like you're just erasing into it a little bit, but it kind of just helps me get like a little idea of how we might want to do some some coloring and we'll bring some of these objects forward a little bit here. You know, I, I think just having like that little bit of differentiation, you know, how we're gonna light her face. I've been really liking this kind of like side jaw light lately. So I've kind of been overdoing it, but <laughs> I like it too much. But then maybe some of that'll hit her ear and it can hit the side of her nose and like maybe her mouth here or something. That's something we can figure out as we go. The lighting for me is always super important, so it, it must be figured out. Yeah, but we're still staying loose. We're popping around. I'm not being super tied into anything. Making sure to save it. And the same thing, maybe we'll pop the contrast even a little bit be higher. I'll just go to an overlay layer. Same thing, airbrush. And let's just kind of dab behind her. 
And then sometimes I'll just go back in because I don't want to blow her out. And I'm just erasing some of all that that just went in. You know, this is something that you can avoid if you handle your layers properly and if she was actually sitting on a layer and you're painting behind her. But I'm a sloppy person when it comes to layers. Probably because I flatten so much, you know? And I just want to keep going. I don't want to like stop and figure that stuff out. So, but we're starting to get a character made. I think this is a great first part where, all right, we have this sketch down of this character. We have some base stuff. There's some things I like and some things I don't like. Like, I think the top area is coming out pretty cool. I think I can really make this kind of tank top thing more interesting. It's very solid and blocky right now. I think one thing's, so this is kind of what I do. This is actually a good way to do it. I'll show you guys. Now I'll just write it down next to it. Is it's almost like a checklist. I get to this stage and I kind of checklist myself. So one of the things I'm looking at is the like the the silhouette, right? We'll just put sill. Uh, what's working? What's not working? I think this top area right here, silhouette wise, is looking pretty cool. I like it. This bottom part needs some help. It needs some interest. I think the gauntlets here, I think it's almost there. Maybe if we figure out our areas, maybe this part is bulked up more on where her elbows are or vice versa. You know, maybe we can do something about that. Um, and then the second thing really I want to take a look at and is the uh, proportions. And you know, maybe her thighs are a little bit too long based on from her knee down to her ankle. How can I push those more? I might want to look at that. Maybe I want to stretch her legs out even more. I've been kind of doing these like elongated legs, which I do like the look of, but it can get, it can be too much as well. So I do want to look at those. And then next one, cause for me, the face is always very, very important. I'll go retackle like a face design. I want to go in and be like, all right, because, you know, her eyes might be from this early sketch. They might be like a little crooked. You know, where is the center? And so this eye looks like it's a, a little bit closer to the bridge of the nose and the other, maybe the ears. I just want to make sure it's all working properly. Where is this connecting to the jaw and where is her neck actually back here? It's going to be pretty important, you know, and then it goes into some of the lip design and, you know, nostrils and all that stuff that we can take a look at all this little stuff. And so I'm not really even going to think about the color. And then the next step really after all that, we're going to go back into the uh, armor and outfit design. This is a good time where you can take a breath, right? So I'm like, all right, well, I want to inc incorporate more kind of like modern or futuristic clothing with armor. So let me take a look and look at some, you know, some clothing stuff on Pinterest, some cool different ways where maybe it looks like this kind of like tank top over like this kind of like sports bra thing underneath or who knows, you know, we can really take a look at some ideas and bring in that kind of contemporary taste with it. The same down here, you know, how these little pieces, maybe she has these kind of like a, a knee pad on one side. I think making th some things a little asymmetrical might be pretty awesome as well. So this is always a stage where I kind of ask myself those questions, right? And then smaller stuff, even um, let's say weapon design. I think their weapon is uh, always pretty important too. Like I think some parts are cool about this, but we could probably think of a, a Viking future Viking weapon that might look more like one with a better hilt too. Maybe, maybe it has some like awesome looking hilt design on it. Right. And maybe that's super important to her design. And she's got these cool, little, like she's personalized and these little things that hang off of these little bangles and you know, who knows that's, but it's like a great stopping point for us to figure out all this stuff out. And then once we kind of mess around and put it all on, let's go back in and do another clean line drawing, then go into the painting. And I think that's an, I think that's a really good place to end it for today. I think it's really so much kind of your own decision-making 
and kind of knowing when to stop and then ask yourself these questions. And like that actually goes into the face design I was talking about before, look at it now. Maybe I want to stop and be like, I like the kind of back of her hair and how it might swoop down at an angle, but maybe we can try some different bangs. How are we going to see more of her forehead? Is it going to be, I'm not, I'm not super sure yet. And so that's something that's sometimes it's nice to walk away for a second, come back and think about, but I hope you guys enjoyed this morning's episode. It was really nice to kind of just hang out and sketch. And I'm actually gonna have a lot of fun with this character. I'm actually, I want to continue this character for this series. So I'm not, I am not gonna touch it till we hop into the next one. I'm gonna probably get, get a bunch of reference and a lot of these ideas I'm talking about. And then let's see the next stage on how I incorporate some of that phase two ideas on top of this and see where we can take it. But you guys are so amazing. Next week, I'm gonna have the more in-depth guide on the DG Man Brush and how I use it through all my paintings. And like I said, a uh, link down below if you wanna check that out. You guys are completely amazing. Thank you for your patience with me. Through all these weeks where there's gaps in videos, uh, I really am trying. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one.